This is a crazy topic. There are multiple studies implicating paracetamol use as a risk factor for children developing serious conditions. So why hasn't your doctor told you this? And what should you do about it? Make no mistake, health authorities know all about this. But the information is need to know, and they don't think that you need to know. But I think that you do. Paracetamol is thought of as a pretty safe drug. It's commonly used in pregnancy and childhood to treat pain and fever. But some researchers and epidemiologists have major concerns. I've put a load of studies in the description that I'd encourage you to have a look at. But if you're about to click off this video, then at least check out the first one I've linked. It's a group of scientists, medical experts, and public health professionals seriously concerned about the problems they believe paracetamol is contributing to. And it has really good summary points and graphics. So here are some of the concerns. Firstly, with how paracetamol taken during pregnancy can affect a baby's development. Multiple population studies suggest an association between a mother's paracetamol use and the risk of the child going on to develop ADHD, autism, or lower IQ. The longer paracetamol is used during pregnancy, the higher the risk. Other population studies have suggested an association between paracetamol use in pregnancy and both undescended testes and a shorter anogenital distance in male babies. Undescended testes are a risk factor for future infertility and testicular cancer. Anogenital distance is a marker of a baby's testicular development during the first trimester, and a shorter distance has been correlated to reduced semen quality. One study showed an association between paracetamol use and earlier female puberty. Going through puberty earlier puts females at an increased risk of breast cancer. It is worth bearing in mind that these are epidemiological studies. They do have serious limitations in that they often look at correlation, which doesn't necessarily mean causation. And you can easily end up with lots of other confounding factors, which quickly clouds the picture. However, many of the researchers discuss plausible mechanisms of action for how paracetamol could cause the problems discussed. Plus, some of the problems can be recreated experimentally. Paracetamol disrupts hormones in human testes when tested in a laboratory setting. Male rats exposed to paracetamol during pregnancy and early life have reduced levels of testicular testosterone and reduced masculinization. And one study using a xenograft model with human tissue implanted into a rat showed that one week of paracetamol use reduces testosterone production by human fetal testicular tissue. And onto the risks of paracetamol use in childhood. Multiple population studies show an association between use of paracetamol in early life and the risk of developing asthma, eczema, and allergic symptoms. At absolute minimum, all this has at least got to make us put the brakes on and be very careful about paracetamol until more is known. And that's what the researchers in these studies repeatedly call for. So back to the first question, why hasn't your doctor cautioned you about any of this? Well, it's probably because they don't know. If a doctor in the UK wants to know about drug side effects and risks, they look at the British National Formulary, but that doesn't list any of these things as side effects of paracetamol. And this is what it says for pregnancy, not known to be harmful. Your doctor cannot warn you if they don't know. The NHS page is much more definite. Paracetamol is the first choice of painkiller if you're pregnant. It is commonly taken during pregnancy and does not harm your baby. This page goes on to direct the reader to another website, medicinesinpregnancy.org, where they do mention some of the concerns highlighted by these studies, but here is how they report them. There is therefore currently no scientific proof that paracetamol causes birth defects, undescended testes, or changes in hormone levels. It has been widely reported in the media that these studies have shown that paracetamol use in pregnancy causes behavioural problems in the child. However, many experts agree that the evidence is not good enough to draw such conclusions and that much more research is required. There is currently no firm scientific evidence that taking paracetamol in pregnancy increases your baby's chance of wheezing or asthma later on in life. So that's it. No proof, no firm scientific evidence, more research is needed. But what are we going to do in the meantime? We can either apply the precautionary principle, which is we might be causing serious harm to children. We are not sure, but we need to be really careful until we actually know. When it comes to drugs, that's the approach that I think we should be taking. The other approach is, don't worry about it, just crack on. Drugs are innocent until proven guilty. I think there is this idea that if you give the general public too much information and allow them to glimpse the huge amount of uncertainty that permeates medicine, then they might become confused and worried and lose trust in healthcare systems. So maybe authorities should take that confusion away by deciding what the correct answer is and presenting it as a concrete fact. The reality is that we, the general population, are the experiment. Your children are the experiment. But observational studies on populations are clearly not enough proof 
for healthcare authorities to apply the precautionary principle when it comes to paracetamol. So how do you get actual proof? Well, you could take a huge group of pregnant women and children and ply half of them with paracetamol, attempt to account for all the variables and see what happens. Can you imagine trying to convince pregnant women to enter into that study after you explain the sort of results you're looking for? This is not the sort of study that gets approved by an ethics committee for obvious reasons. But apparently it is ethical to allow the general public to be the experiment while not actually informing them about it. So we are stuck in this sort of closed loop. If we're going to wait for definite proof, then we may be waiting forever. In the meantime, smashing down paracetamol like it's going out of fashion. So what should you do about it? Well, firstly, be aware that with any pharmaceuticals, there are always going to be risks, both known and unknown. Lifestyle interventions should always be the primary focus of healthcare. Medications should usually only be taken when absolutely necessary, at the lowest effective dose for the shortest possible time, especially when considering children who are still developing. I speak to parents all the time who give paracetamol and ibuprofen as a knee-jerk reaction as soon as their child gets any sort of illness or fever. Do not do that. Paracetamol is not a treatment for any infection. A fever is the body's way of killing the bug. Parents should not be habitually using drugs to interfere with that process. Drugs should only be considered in extremis. If you are pregnant, then be very cautious about all medications, even if you're being told they are safe to use in pregnancy. It's very unlikely that your doctor has the capacity to be up to date on all the latest research for every single drug. And even if they are, there are bound to be problems yet to be discovered. And if you're looking back wondering what might I have done to my kids? Then don't beat yourself up. Quite obviously, paracetamol is just one potential factor. We can only do our best to positively impact the controllable factors that we know about at the time. Equally though, don't just pretend it's not happening. It's never too late to implement caution, even if it's just so you can share the information with others so that future generations can develop that healthy amount of skepticism. Now, if you've endured thus far, you may well be wondering what else is it that paracetamol is contributing to or may be contributing to that we don't know about yet. And the answer to that is, who knows? Also, you may be wondering, is it just paracetamol or have I got disturbing information like this on loads of other common medications? Well, make sure you subscribe because then you'll find out. Spoiler alert, I know a lot of dirt on a lot of drugs. Do let me know in the comments what you think. Thanks for listening. I'll see you next time.